This video and all of its contents, including any opinions expressed by the narrator, are strictly for entertainment purposes only and is not intended in any way as a substitute for professional services and consultation from a licensed therapist, doctor, attorney, or other licensed professional service provider. Each person must make their own life decisions, and those decisions are theirs. Welcome back to Find Your Alpha. We're back at you this week with another terrific video, and I want to warn you, it's a long one, but boy, is it a good one. So let's get right into it, and you can see the title right on your screen. Sigma Husband Rug Pulls the Good Life from His Cheating Wife. Now, let's get into this story. And the OP starts out, and he says... Since my divorce, I've been reading online forums like this and thought I'd tell my story. In a lot of these posts, I read about guys making the same dumb mistakes. While not perfect, I think I handled my situation with strength and successfully reclaimed the dignity and respect my ex-wife tried to steal from me. This all went down a little over four years ago now. At the time, I was 46 and my wife was 44. For the purpose of this, I'll call her Grace and refer to myself as Craig. We had been married 23 years and had two beautiful daughters, ages 23 and 21. Our first child arrived five months early, so to speak, and that's why we married so young. So his wife was pregnant when they got married. Before discovering the cheating, if you asked me to rank my marriage on a scale of 1 to 10, I would have given it an 11. Grace was a stay-at-home mom, and she was a great one. Not only did she raise our daughters to be wonderful young women, she managed the home and took really good care of me. She was always there to support me in my career, which enabled us to enjoy a great family life. I really thought I hit the marriage lottery with her. A number of guys I know have not been so lucky and always seemed miserable. In my case, there were absolutely no signs of anything being amiss in our relationship. I mean nothing, right up until just before I caught her cheating. When did it start? Well, after our daughters moved out, my wife suddenly had a lot more free time on her hands. Initially, she filled the extra time volunteering at our church and doing more things with our parents. She also considered getting a part-time job, but couldn't find anything she liked. The one thing she convinced me to do was to adopt a puppy. I'll call him Barky. Barky filled that maternal void Grace experienced after our daughters moved out. Being a crazy puppy, Barky initially required a lot of attention. In addition to the standard walking, feeding, bathing, and vet trips, Grace also had to house and obedience train him. She did a great job and really seemed to enjoy having Barky around, as did I, except for the time when he chewed up a pair of my shoes and one of my favorite belts. We enjoyed regular intimacy, though we had slowed down a bit over the years. Even so, we still managed to do it a couple times a week, which isn't bad for a couple who'd been together for over 26 years. My first clue something was amiss was when my wife stopped initiating intimacy. Normally, we'd both initiate, but she stopped a few weeks before I discovered she was cheating. So that is a big red flag right there, and he recognized it. Around that same time, I noticed during lovemaking, she'd just lay there and not really be into it. Now, this is like the third or fourth story I've done where guys have pointed this out, that women started acting this way before they cheated. So that's a really big red flag. Before this, she was always an enthusiastic participant, but that all suddenly seemed to stop. I should have called her out on it, but I didn't thinking it might be something I was doing. See, in this case, this guy is internalizing this, thinking, oh my gosh, I must be doing something wrong. You know, it has to be me. It can't be her. This newly acquired apathy really bothered me, and I thought about it often, but said nothing. Big mistake there, OP. In all other areas of our married life, Grace was her ever-loving self. She kissed me when I left for work and greeted me with a kiss when I arrived back home. 
She'd cuddle with me during the evenings and always wanted me to spoon with her in bed. Nothing new here, except she seemed even more affectionate than ever around that time. So again here, another case of love bombing. Now, fast forward to the day where my suspicions of her cheating were first raised. It was around 2.30, and I needed to take a break from the office. I had been working non-stop on a report and just needed to get away for an hour, so I thought I'd head home and visit with my wife for a bit, then head back to the office refreshed to finish that report. On my way home, I was stopped at the red light at the end of our street. The view I had of the intersection was looking up the street in the direction of our house. It's a busy intersection, and the light takes forever to change, so you normally end up sitting there for four to five minutes before it changes, and that day was no different. As I was sitting there, I noticed my wife coming around the side of one of the houses down the street from ours. I knew the family that lived there, but not very well. The husband is a tradesman who has his own business in town. We were one of his customers. I'm purposely not identifying his profession to maintain privacy. Also, he along with his wife and kids worshipped at our church. As my wife was walking up the street towards our house, I pulled over to the curb, rolled down my window, and asked her in a gruff voice, Where have you been? I was just doing it to kid her, but the response I got from her was not what I expected. Instead of a, honey, I'm excited to see you look, I instead got an, oh crap, I've been caught look. Now that is a major, major red flag. When she got in the car, she seemed nervous and told me their dog got out and was running up the street. She said she caught the dog and led it by the collar back to their house. Now this was really odd because their dog is an 18-year-old collie mix that can barely walk, let alone run. I'll call her Lady. Surprised, I asked my wife, did they get a new dog? She stuttered and said, no, it was Lady. Grace nervously laughed and said she never saw Lady move so fast. I then asked her where Barky was, and she said he's home. Then she quickly told me she just went out for a walk to get some fresh air. This was another red flag, as she always took Barky with her on walks. I then noticed she strongly smelled of Old Spice or something like it. She nervously said, yeah, that guy really bathes in it. I'll call that guy Tad and his wife Marcia. I asked her how she got it on her, and she said she must have brushed up against him when she handed Lady off to him. I asked if Marcia was home, and she said she didn't know. When we got home, she seemed jumpy, talking fast about a myriad of different things. I told her I couldn't stand the smell of the cologne and to go take a shower. Now let me tell you guys, that is a big red flag. Because you don't end up smelling like somebody else's cologne unless that person is rubbing on you or has touched something that you've touched. So that is a major red flag that this woman is reeking of cheap cologne. She said it was gagging her too and went in and took a quick shower. She came out wrapped in a towel and spent time talking with me before I went back to work. At this point, my spider senses were on high alert. I could tell something wasn't right. Then came the thing that cinched it for me. Before I left to go back to the office, I went to use the bathroom, the same one she just showered in. As I went to wash my hands, the hand soap dispenser was empty. I opened the lower cabinet to get another bottle and noticed a pair of her panties in the back of the cabinet draped over a shampoo bottle. I reached back and picked them up and they were wet and smelled of shampoo, like they had just been washed out and placed back there. I knew what this meant. I placed them back on the shampoo bottle and closed the cabinet. I was angry. I mean, really angry. I felt like going in that living room and doing something terrible, 
but I kept my cool and instead quickly got out of there and went back to work. When I got home that night, I started my investigation. While Grace was busy cooking, I checked her phone and found nothing suspicious. I then checked the seven-day archive from our doorbell camera. Reviewing the footage, I found that on three of the past seven days, my Grace left the house, walked out the front door without Barky, and didn't come back for over an hour. She never walks that long, and none of her friends are home during the day, so she wasn't hanging out with them. I knew she was going to see Tad, but I needed concrete proof. I then thought of hiring a P.I., but there were a ton of them listed online, and I didn't know which one to choose. I then remembered that one of my co-workers' father is a retired police officer who did a little P.I. work after leaving the force. I played in a golf outing with him once, and he's a great guy. I asked my co-worker if his dad still did P.I. work. He said no, explaining he fully retired a few years back. He asked if I needed PI work done, and I told him I had a potential project. He suggested I have a conversation with his dad, who I'll call Frank, as he could help guide me. Frank called me that afternoon, and I explained my dilemma. To my surprise, he said he'd be glad to do this for me and didn't want paid for it. He said he'd enjoy doing it as he really missed getting out and working. Frank further explained that he stopped taking PI jobs a few years ago because they involved a lot of vehicle travel and he didn't like driving that much being 82. I'll tell you the guy doesn't look a day over 70. He said that since everything in my case seems to be happening on the same street, he could easily handle my job. I told him that would be great and I would let him do it if he let me pay him. Frank agreed and got to work the next morning, staking out on our street for the rest of that week. He got nothing. The only thing he witnessed was Grace walking Barky a few times a day. Frank told me to be patient and explain my wife may have cooled things after I almost caught her. He said in his experience, they always crack. In the meantime, my wife seemed like her normal self. And I managed to keep my anger in check and acted normal too. I did, however, cut off all intimacy with her and tried avoiding any form of affection whenever I could. At night, I'd sit in a chair instead of on the couch so she couldn't snuggle with me. I started sleeping on my left side, facing away from her in bed, telling her my back was sore. This prevented her from spooning with me. The following week came and Frank saw nothing on Monday or Tuesday. I started thinking maybe this whole thing was my imagination. Then, as I was driving home on Wednesday, I got a call from Frank. He said he had something to show me and it wasn't good. He said Tad came home and parked in his garage around 2 p.m. Then, Ten minutes later, my wife walked over and entered the back door of the home. She stayed there for a little over an hour and then walked back to our house. He got video of Tad going in and video of my wife creeping quickly in and out of their house. I met Frank in a restaurant parking lot down the street and he showed me the disturbing videos. He suggested he continue monitoring her activities for the rest of the week, and I agreed. She repeated the same again on Thursday. While eating dinner with Grace on Wednesday and Thursday evening, I asked what she did that day. The only thing she said was that she did housework and walked Barky. That sealed it for me. I made the decision to divorce her and leave her so fast she wouldn't know what hit her. On Friday, I went to the best lawyer I could find. He took my case, and I presented him with the evidence Frank produced. The attorney explained that our state has at-fault divorce laws, which favor the betrayed party. He said that while the videos and pictures were very good, they weren't 100% conclusive proof that my wife was cheating. He continued saying that though it wasn't conclusive evidence, he felt it was enough to prove infidelity 
and as such, he was confident I would not be required to pay alimony. The attorney did say, however, that I would be required to split any assets we accumulated during the marriage. I told him while I didn't love the idea of giving up 50% of my wealth, I was okay with it as Grace had been a great wife and mother up to the point where she cheated on me. Well, as luck would have it, I was able to get more conclusive evidence of her affair with Tad two days later. Now listen to this. I came home from work a little early, and my wife said she needed to run out to the store to pick up a few items. Specifically, she wanted to get some sweet corn for our dinner. When she left, I changed out of my dress clothes and was about to put my shirt in the laundry basket when I spotted a pair of her panties laying beside the basket. It appeared she meant to throw them in and missed. Now this is the gross part where I nearly went insane. When I picked up the panties, they were wet in the crotch and smelled with a distinct odor of male and female body fluids. Instead of being sad or angry, I instead felt like I had hit the mother load. I got a plastic freezer bag and placed the panties in it, then took the bag out to the trunk of my car. After that, I went to the sink and washed my hands with Dawn and baking soda in the hottest water I could stand. Grace returned and started cooking dinner, totally oblivious to my discovery. Looking back now, I don't know how I made it through dinner without exploding on her. But I did just fine and even helped her wash and dry the dishes. After dinner, I was sitting in the living room doing some work on my laptop, facing the kitchen and the laundry room. Grace went into the laundry room to put a load in the washer. I watched her out of the corner of my eye as she searched frantically for those panties. She looked under the washer, then under the dryer, then on the shelves and the floor. She even pulled out the units and looked behind them. She then walked down the hall, still, I assume, in search of those panties. Eventually she gave up in frustration and came to join me in the living room. As I sat there, it dawned on me that at that very moment my wife was chock full of another man's DNA. It also hit me that she planned to wash those nasty panties in the same laundry with my clothes. The level of disgust I felt at that moment made me hate her, and I've never gotten over it till this day. She disgusted me. No matter how many great years she had given me, I will always remember her by the betrayal and disrespect and nothing more. The following day, I told my attorney what I found. He instructed me to hang on to the panties, as we might use them in court if needed should my wife dispute the fact she was cheating. He said he would discuss the panties pre-trial with her counsel once she obtained one. He said just making them aware we had the article in our possession would likely be enough to convince her not to challenge the claim. Now, it was just a waiting game until my attorney prepared the divorce papers so I could confront my wife. In the meantime, I shared what was going on with my parents, brother, and his wife. Their response was as expected. Grace? No way! They couldn't believe it. They offered to help me in any way they could. I told them I'd like them all to be there with me when I confronted Grace. They all readily agreed to do so. When the day of the confrontation came, I asked my wife to invite our parents, brother, and sister-in-law over for coffee since we hadn't gotten together with them in a few weeks. She happily obliged and said she'd prepare a few special desserts for the occasion. When I got home that night, Grace and I had dinner and cleaned up. She then set the table with her desserts and put on a big pot of coffee. Everyone arrived well ahead of time and took a seat in the dining room. I was a bundle of nerves. As we all sat down, Grace poured everyone coffee and served us desserts. For a minute, I felt terrible for what I was about to do, but that feeling quickly dissipated. After everyone was served, I told the group I had a surprise for my wife. 
She looked up at me with love in her eyes, thinking I was going to announce something special. I'll never forget that look as long as I live. I then proceeded to tell her that I knew she had been having an affair for the past month with Tad and his last name he's got listed here. My family sat in silence while her parents were completely dumbstruck. Grace at first tried playing dumb, asking me what I was talking about. She then started crying, saying she didn't cheat and that this was all a big misunderstanding. I told her I had a private investigator following her every move for the past month. Exaggerating a bit there, but who cares? I then informed her I had multiple videos of her sneaking in and out of Tad's home. Grace then said she could explain, saying she was just going there to help him with his dog. I then asked her to explain what she did alone with a male neighbor in his home without his wife being present and without telling her husband. Repeating, please explain this to me. She just stammered as she tried to think of something and then started crying hard saying it wasn't what it looked like. I then pulled out my ace in the hole and told her I found a pair of her soiled underwear and had them tested. I said the results contained the DNA of another man, not me. Again, I was stretching the truth here, but it worked. She cracked and went from saying it was a misunderstanding to saying she was sorry and begging me for forgiveness. The lying in her attempt to gaslight me was revolting. She looked at me sobbing with her hands folded like she was praying, begging me for mercy. I said nothing. This went on for a few minutes until she put her head down on the table and sobbed. Her mom went over to comfort her. I then told my parents, brother and sister-in-law that it was time for us to go. Grace looked up and asked where I was going and I told her I was moving out until we divorced. At this point, she cried like she was being tortured and again put her head back down on the table. My sister-in-law then joined her mom in comforting her and they led her back to our master bedroom. Her dad then turned to me and asked me what the H-E-double-L just happened here. He couldn't believe it and just started apologizing to me. My sister-in-law came out and suggested that we leave and she'd stay behind with Grace and her parents for a while to make sure everything was all right. My sister-in-law is like a big sister to me and I really appreciated what she, my brother, and my parents did in helping me get through my divorce. I stayed the night with my parents and the following morning I called my girls to inform them. I told them everything. They were shocked saddened, and they couldn't believe their mother of all people could do something like that, especially with Mr. Blank of all people. They knew his kids and were really upset by the whole thing. They said after they got off the phone with me, they were going to call her together to scream at her and may never speak to her again. I'm not going to lie. Hearing their reaction made me feel good. I told them as adults, they need to process this as they see fit. But I also reminded them that she has been a great mother and was a great wife to me up until the point she cheated. I said their mom was going to need their support in the coming months and told them if they did support her, I wouldn't be offended in any way. In fact, I told them I would be proud of them if they did so, which they ended up doing. The following day, I received seven missed calls from Tad's business line. I knew at that point my wife had alerted him and he was likely calling me to run interference from telling his wife. This only ticked me off more. So that afternoon, I went over to the insurance agency office where Marsha worked to tell her. I have my homeowner's insurance with that agency, so when I got there, she thought I was coming in with a question. Luckily for me, she was alone in the office and I asked if she had a few minutes to speak with me privately. She said yes, informing me no one else was there. I came right out and told her. She didn't believe it at first, but then I showed her the videos and she started crying. 
I then told her my wife had given a full confession and explained the affair had been going on at their house for about a month. She again couldn't believe it, but said she had noticed a strange perfume-like smell in their bedroom recently. I told her that was likely my wife's perfume. I then told her I experienced something similar when my wife came home one day smelling like cheap cologne. She asked me what I was going to do, and I told her I would be divorcing my wife. Hearing this, she just cried and again said she couldn't believe this was happening. She told me she would likely do the same, but had to think about it. I told her that her husband tried calling me seven times that morning, so he likely knows the affair has been outed. She said she would be leaving shortly to confront him. She thanked me, we exchanged cell numbers, and I left feeling a sense of accomplishment, but also feeling really bad for her and her kids. She's a really nice person who does a ton of volunteer work at our church. She didn't deserve this, just like I didn't deserve this. But sometimes life deals you a bad hand, and you just have to play it. I stayed with my parents for the next few weeks, but then decided to get a little furnished apartment near my office as both my parents' and brothers' homes are nearly an hour away from my place of business. From the day I confronted her until the day our divorce was final, Grace tried endlessly to get me to reconsider. She said she would agree to anything if I would stay, but I refused any and all offers. My attorney advised me to avoid having discussions with her, and if I did, to record each call and advise her up front, I'd be doing so. So that's what I did. If she left me a message or texted me regarding our relationship, I just ignored her. But if it was something about the house or our kids, I talked to her. Inevitably, on each of these calls, she turned into a sobbing, groveling mess. Each time, I ended up sternly telling her reconciliation was never going to happen and she should take that possibility off the table. After multiple calls like this, one day I reached a breaking point and told her she should pursue a relationship with Tad now, as they both will soon be free. She cried and told me not to say that. She said she hated him and wants nothing to do with him. I said, how can that be so? when she risked our marriage and future together just to have S with him. She just cried and said she doesn't know and to please never mention him again as she wanted to die for what she did. She told me I was her whole world and she really didn't have anything else worth continuing on for except our kids. I told her she should have thought about that before cheating. Our divorce was eventually finalized and it was amicable but not without last-minute theatrics. In the courtroom, my wife asked to speak, and I could tell her attorney was a little surprised. She turned and faced me and said she just wanted to tell me on the record how sorry she was for what she had done and to thank me for the great life I had given her. She said she will love me forever and hope one day I could forgive her and we could be friends. When she finished, I told her, Thank you, Grace and turned to face the judge. While it's unlikely I'll ever forgive her, I did appreciate her statement. The judge asked me if I had anything to add. I told him no, and he proceeded to render his decision. In the end, it went just like my attorney said. No alimony, and we split our marital assets. So guys, that's how I handled things. You've got to respect yourself, be strong, and stay true to your values. I told Grace right after we started dating that cheating was a red line for me. She told me it was for her too, and I respected that. She crossed that line multiple times and knew the consequences. While I never expected to be single at this age, I'm happy where I am now and have no regrets. So that's the end of his original post. And now we're going to take a look at a few responses he got from the community. But before we do, I want to remind you, if you're liking what you hear, hit that like button. That will help get this video seen by people all over the planet. Now, let's take a look at some of those responses. The first one's from a woman. She says, OP, what your wife did was despicable and deserving of some level of punishment. However, I think the way you handled things was also despicable. 
You treated her like a common criminal instead of the woman who you admitted was a wonderful wife, mother, and daughter-in-law. I just think she deserved to be treated with a little more respect considering all the years you shared together. I think one day you'll regret this. Well, I have to disagree with this woman, of course, because did she treat him with respect when she was stepping out with this Tad and having this affair with Tad and then bringing that junk home to her husband? Absolutely not. I think this OP handled this situation appropriately. Next, this response is from a guy. He says, I like the way you handled the situation, and I wish I'd done the same. Instead, I stayed married, big mistake, but just couldn't forgive my wife, and eventually I ended up pushing the divorce button 18 months later. Amazingly, after we divorced, I was able to forgive her, and we have a good relationship now. I date a few regulars here and there, one of which is my ex, big mistake, but I will never marry again. In hindsight, we should have divorced immediately. The next response is from a woman. She says, did you ever consider marriage counseling? It just seems so sad that you were willing to give up on a 26-year marriage without at least giving counseling a try. Well, did his wife not give up on the marriage when she stepped out with this tad? From my observation, it seems women are much more forgiving of their husbands when they cheat, whereas men, especially macho men, look for any excuse to bail. Now, what does she mean by macho men? Not saying you were this way and what she did wasn't wrong, but I wanted to share my thoughts. Well, I totally disagree with this lady. And finally, another response from a guy. He says, I'm going through this now, and your post gave me a lot to think about. Three weeks ago, I discovered my wife cheated on me with her former boyfriend. Very typical. We're still together, but I'm barely speaking to her, and she's sleeping on the couch. The only reason I'm still here is for my little girl, who just turned three. I dread the thought of being separated from my baby. But after reading your post and others, I think divorce would be best for all of us. I don't know his situation, but I'd have to agree. And now for the final update so we can see how things all turned out for this OP and for his wife. And this update comes 19 months after his original post. He says, hello all. Based on the subsequent responses I got to my original post, I felt I should come back and provide an update. Everything in my life is great now. Since the divorce, I bought a new home closer to my office and have spent a lot of time doing some remodeling and indoor painting to get the place looking like I want. My girls are great. Both are now graduated from college and my eldest is getting married this summer. Her fiancé is a solid guy and I will be glad to have him join our family. My ex-wife Grace seems to be settling into her new life as well. She lived with her parents for about six months after we sold the house and just recently got an apartment of her own. She also recently got a job at Safeway. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with Safeway, that's a grocery store out on the West Coast. It's a big grocery store like a, you know, like a Kroger's or a Winn-Dixie. Working in one of the departments there, my girls tell me she really likes her job and it has done a lot to brighten her spirits. As far as dating goes, I just got back in the game and have been dating the real estate agent who I worked with when I bought my house. She's divorced with two kids too, and her marriage ended under similar circumstances with her husband. Like me, she has no interest in getting married. We just enjoy spending time together, and our physical chemistry, I must say, is off the charts, as you would expect with a new romantic partner. Grace hasn't started dating again, and she's told my daughters and my parents that she'll never get into a relationship with another man. She's told them her end game is that one day we will reunite. She said until that happens, Barky is going to be the only other male love interest she has. While I'm really glad to see she is adjusting to her new life and want her to be happy, I will never reunite with her after what she did to me. 
I will be cordial and polite when we are in situations together, like my daughter's wedding, but other than that, I plan to have minimal communication with her. I really want to thank everyone who commented here, and was glad to see that my post provided inspiration to several of you who are dealing with a similar situation. To those individuals who wrote me saying I was toxic or had self-esteem problems, I can assure you that's not the case. Yes, I do see myself as a strong, masculine man with a great career, and yes, I am a strong-willed, independent person and think very highly of myself, but I see those traits as being nothing but positive. If you feel differently, that's your choice. You do you, and I'll do me, and that's the way the world should be. So again, thank you and good luck to those of you who are working through a broken marriage. I'm proof that things do get better, Craig. So that's the end of his story, and I think this guy handled things very well. And with that, I wanted to cover what I think are the morals of the story. Number one, never ignore red flags. At the first sign of trouble, start investigating. And that's exactly what this guy did. Next, after discovering infidelity, don't respond on emotion. Stop. Think things through. Then develop your exit plan. Don't try to repair something that is irreparably broken. When somebody cheats, as I've talked about on every video, that relationship is over. It's history. Next, confront your cheating partner and have witnesses. This guy, you know, he brought her parents, his parents, and his brother and sister-in-law. So she could not spin anything out of that. Next point. Communicate the affair to all relevant parties and inform the other betrayed partner. This guy did that beautifully. And then finally, move forward with the next phase of your life because as we always say, the best revenge is living a good life. So, those are my thoughts, and now I want to hear from you. What did you think of this story? How do you think this guy handled the situation? Would you have done something different? Would you have given this woman a second chance? After all, he did say she was a great wife and a great mother. Based on that, would you have given her a second chance, or would you have cut things off with her just like he did? Tell us about it in the comments. Also, be sure to like this video, share it with your friends, and please subscribe to this channel, and I will talk to you on the next one.